Hi, I am Colleen Monroe, president and owner of Hugh Monroe Construction. My late father, Hugh Monroe, started his company more than 50 years ago. This company has earned a much respected reputation in the heavy civil construction industry in Manitoba, Northwestern Ontario, and Saskatchewan. In addition to our construction services, Hugh Monroe Construction also offers mutually beneficial business opportunities to Aboriginal groups on direct negotiated contracts. Hugh Monroe Construction is committed to assisting the First Nation with the capacity building and knowledge transfer through classroom and hands-on training of their people. Hugh Monroe Construction's purpose is to bolster the First Nation's capacities and resources to increase their involvement with any project scope to maximize their benefit. Human Row Construction welcomes the opportunity to meld two cultures together for one culture of success. My name is Aaron Castell. I'm the Aboriginal Liaison and I work with uh, Manitoba Construction Sector Council. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Indigenous cultural awareness when entering into semi-isolated, isolated communities for Human Rose projects. In today's reality, we're talking about the lifestyles in the communities or in urban centers. And a lot of the, the children in our communities are suffering in regards to uh, lack of nutrition, lack of education, children in care. The youth are right behind that in uh, youth car incarceration and trouble with the law. The adults who are unemployed, underskilled, a lot of um, a lot of them are on social assistance, living and supporting their families on social assistance. And then we talk about the elders, you know, the elders right now are lost. We're going to talk a little bit of how we got here. In the histories and on the past lifestyles, a lot of the families were very closely knit. And everything was connected in the sense that everybody had a purpose. The child was more of the center of the family's well-being, the future of the family's well-being of the legacy that's going to be continuing on in the, in the holistic approach. But that all changed when, when they become young, young adults. Parents taught the young people the basics of survival, the basics of um, maintaining the community's needs. So when they became adults at 22, and a lot of uh, the gatherings and uh, the, the structural community governance was handled at the adult stage. Elders were the, were the wise keepers of the traditions, the, the historians, and they were the ones that were to always give guidance. It's all governed by the natural laws. What I mean by the natural laws is it's governed by the four seasons. Uh, the community was moving all the time, and we had a very good way of living. And then contact happened, Europeans came over, and government start coming into play, residential schools start happening, and the impact of residential school was quite phenomenal because when it affects a family, it affects a community. When it affects a community, it affects economic development and, and growth as a community. So when you take the child away, you're taking the heart of the community away. There's a ripple effect that happens. So there was a lot of loss at that time, a lot of depression that happened in the family circle. When the, when the children came back from residential school, they came back a whole different person because they didn't understand who their family was. So there was a lot of turmoil going on. A lot of First Nations people, the indigenous communities were upset. A lot of them were forced onto reservations and told they have to stay there. They can't go to their, their, their summer camp. They have to stay here. If you leave here, you have to get permission from Indian Affairs agent. We, as a First Nations people, didn't understand the governance style, the Western style of um, building a community. And the women were taken away from their, their, their leadership role and given to the men, and their roles had been changed, and they have to understand how to govern their, their community. So you can see how it comes to be as a, as a loss of way of life. It impacts today's communities. A lot of the community members that are living in First Nations right now, uh, the employment opportunities are limited. A lot of the community members don't have post-secondary education. You know, a lot of uh, economic development that goes on in First Nations community are land-based work, like uh, trapping and hunting, and it's seasonal work. What we take for granted in urban settings or, or rural settings, we have access to roads. 
you find out there's one road in the First Nation community and that ends. Uh, you find out inappropriate accommodations in the First Nations communities, lack of housing. You know, there's a boil water advisory. Clean water is not available. There's not too many places where you can go and um, get yourself a Slurpee or have access to the internet or um, just the simple luxuries that you have come accustomed to. You will not have that on a First Nations communities. And those are the barriers that the average person on the First Nation has to live with every day. If they wanted to get out, they have to jump on a plane that costs $350 to get out of the community. So the partnerships between the communities, um, trainers and the community's employment and training are very important. And developing a mentorship relationship between the industry and the communities is very important because you're, you're ambassadors to uh, human role construction and vice versa. Uh, the community needs to understand that you're there to, uh, to learn about the industry. And they, they need to understand that they, they're part of the, the big picture to become professionals in the heavy construction industry as well. And, and also be open and willing to provide that work opportunity. If someone's curious about what's involved in welding, explain to them, show them be part of their, their learning process. And it, it, it opens a lot of doors for the local workforce to become more engaged in, in, in the projects that you're doing. You are part of the bigger picture of this joint venture. Without you, uh, the project won't happen. Human Row Construction's vision for the future is change within our industry and how we work in the development of a workforce that has no division. Thank you for participating in this change. Mm -hmm.